Dejó a su hijo en la parte trasera de su auto y dejó que... ...de la forma más horrible e inimaginable. Y es que mientras él texteaba a distintas mujeres, su hijo se sofocaba al interior de su vehículo. Era 18 de junio de 2014, cuando Justin Ross Harris puso a su hijo en el asiento de bebé y lo amarró con el cinturón de seguridad. Después condujo desde su hogar hasta un restaurante para tomar desayuno y de ahí se fue a su lugar de trabajo. Sin embargo, en vez de llevar a Cooper a la guardería, Harris lo dejó dentro del coche todo el día. Y no fue hasta después de las 4 p.m. de ese día que Harris se dio cuenta de que su hijo seguía en el vehículo, paró en el estacionamiento de un centro comercial y sacó el cuerpo de Cooper del coche entre gritos y lágrimas. Según la fiscalía, Harris sí podía ver a su hijo en la silla desde el asiento del piloto, por lo que no se trataría de otro caso de un padre con el síndrome de bebé olvidado, sino más bien de algo mucho más oscuro. And over time, it got hotter and hotter and hotter until it reached a, a point where uh, Cooper's temperature got uh, beyond the, the point of irreversibility, and he. Would this have a some sort of physical or painful effect on Cooper Harris? I believe that he went through various stages as he was. Yes. La evidencia mostró que el día en que su hijo Harris intercambió mensajes y fotos con seis mujeres, incluida una menor. Pero eso no sería todo, ya que además había buscado en Internet maneras para vivir sin hijos y cómo sobrevivir en la cárcel, además de ver el siguiente video sobre animales que están encerrados en coches expuestos al sol. Hi, I'm Dr. Ernie Ward. You know how veterinarians are always telling you never leave your pet in a parked car? It gets really hot. This is a typical summer's day. So I thought I would put myself in a parked car and let's see just how hot it gets. Su doble vida había quedado al descubierto, pero ante los ojos de su esposa, familia, amigos y colegas, Harris era un padre y marido amoroso. Sin embargo, desconocían que este hombre mantenía comunicaciones en línea con múltiples mujeres de distintas edades, que tuvo relaciones extramatrimoniales en lugares públicos y que pagó por tener con una prostituta. What type of acts and things like that? Um, it was basically regular vanilla, you know, no crazy fetishes, no nothing. Uh, the first time I remember clearly was a quick visit, which is 15 minutes, just to grab bearing of who you are and who I am, to make sure I'm not a police officer, or it's not a sting. Um, the second time was actually a little bit longer, 30 minutes. Um, the reason I was able, the way I was able to describe him was just he didn't have any presence about himself like he just didn't care very sh dumpy just you know a little bit overweight a little bit on the hefty side you know he just really didn't care about his appearance you can just tell do you remember uh, how many times he would have uh, called you before he would arrive um he'd call yes, me he if he'd call he'd text me the first time and ask me you know hey are you available and I would tell him yes or no and then he called me to let me know that he was there because at the econo lodge you actually had to be um 
you had to stay there in order to get in. You had to have a key card. So I had to let him in because I had to walk to the end of the corridor to let him in from the outside. So I would get called at least twice. Once to ask if I was available, a second time to let me know when they were there so I could let them in. Did you actually engage blacks with him back in May? Yes, on three different occasions. Y a pesar de todo lo que se descubrió durante la investigación, su ex esposa y madre de Cooper describió a Harris como un padre muy involucrado que amaba a su hijo y que la única explicación posible era que todo había sido un accidente. Based on everything that I knew that day, Ross was, Ross was loved in the That was the only thing that made sense. It was the only thing that, that looked in my mind as, as even a remote possibility. He was never checked in. If he was never checked in, then he must have forgot. Okay, and? So I told him, I said I would go over to where Ross works and on this, I would have found his car. I didn't know how they were going to the movie. I didn't know if they were going to carpool. I didn't know if they were going to meet. I just wanted, I wanted to get to where I do Ross could possibly be. I tried to call him. I couldn't get him on the phone. And they tried to get me to stay. And I said, I'm not staying anywhere. I need to find my son and I need to find my husband. There was no evidence in our life as a family of him being angry towards Cooper or aggravated by having Cooper. Cooper was what made him happy. I don't think that he deserves to be in prison for the rest of his life. Finalmente, Justin Ross Harris fue sentenciado a cadena perpetua. The court pronounces the following sentence in the case of the state of Georgia versus Justin Ross Harris, criminal action 1493124. As to count one, the court imposes the sentence of, as to malice, uh, with the jury having found the defendant guilty, sentence of the court is life to serve in confinement without parole. Sin embargo, seis años más tarde, los cargos por el de su hijo fueron desestimados y su condena terminó siendo anulada, pero sigue en prisión cumpliendo la sentencia de sus cargos por intento criminal de cometer explotación de niños y difusión de material nocivo a menores.